was that? Oh. It's come Please be quiet within the premises and refrain from making a racket. Here we are, Lisa's lair. Oh no, that was a bad word choice. Now Sucrose is using it, it's all my fault. Lisa, might I ask if... Huh? Sucrose? Kale? What are you doing here? I can only sucrose that they were Kale-ing on someone. At least uh, that's as far as I know. Oh, please, just stop it with these puns. I beg you! Are you trying to win worldwide fame for unfunny jokes? Um, is Lisa not here at the moment? Surprising, isn't it? She went out. I'm afraid it's just us here looking for information. Except me. I'm not here for information. Like you, I came here for an abortive search for the librarian, who is also my academia senior. Oh, so you studied in the same darshan as Lisa? That's right. Her mentor in Sumeru was also my benefactor. We were both Spontamod students. <sighs> wow, that's cool. But... Wait, we're getting sidetracked. We came here to look for some information. Kale and I are investigating a prophecy. And we were hoping you all might be able to help. Oh? What sort of prophecy? Hmm, I see. You want to ask them about the flower that is not of this world, and me about the one who would never lie. But there's no rush! You don't need to answer right away. We're just here to tell you about the situation. You can take your time to think it over and submit any thoughts you have in written form to the Sucrose Mailbox. The Sucrose Mailbox? <sighs> yep. I was thinking about it on the way. And although they seem like trick questions, there's a lot to mull over once you get down to the details. A quick answer off the top of your head might not go into enough depth. So, I decided to place a mailbox next to the alchemy crafting table. Everyone can submit their written answers there when they're ready. We don't have to call it the Sucrose Mailbox, though. It could just as well be called the Sucrose and Kale Mailbox. Or even the Sucrose, Kale, Traveler, and Paimon Mailbox. <laughs> I think in this case, we can just go with your quick answer off the top of your head. Sounds like a good solution. Certainly more reliable than verbal discussion alone. Agreed. Certainly when it comes to discerning whether someone is a liar or not, you cannot simply take them at their word. Understood. Once we've had a look into it, we'll place our replies into your mailbox. Thank you all so much. Okay, let's take them off the list and carry on working our way down. Mm-hmm. Already done. I'm pleasantly surprised to see those two introverts getting along so well. Do you get the feeling that Kale's return to Mondstadt has emboldened her more contrarian side? Yes, I'd notice that too. Traveling and meeting old friends are both good for the body and soul. And isn't rediscovering one's youth while revisiting old haunts a worthwhile pursuit? When I first met Kale, she'd never known happiness or youth. But things are different now. Her Elazar being cured was a huge milestone in her life. Kale is a very sensitive and introverted child. I'm sure you must have noticed that too, Albedo. From the time she's been in my care, I've observed that she's actually a very lively character by nature. But she had a very rough start in life, and it changed her. So, might I assume that your respective claims of looking for plants and artists in Mondstadt were just... pretexts? I wouldn't say that. Both Kale and Genius Invocation TCG are very important to me. Would it really kill you to just say yes in this situation? Fine. Yes.
We came out of concern for Kale. She's been back to Mondstadt of her own accord several times, but it has led to no significant improvement in her mood. Well, it won't hurt to give her some more time. I believe that Sucrose might be able to help her. Sounds like an extension of your own self-confidence as her teacher. You could say that. In a similar vein, I've heard that Sumeru scholars often build their social relationships based on their academic ones. Is that true? I suppose it might look like that from your perspective. Sumeru society is something of a special case. The reason it is known as the City of Learning is because all of its resources are in some way linked to academia. As such, academic resources equate to social capital. It is not unheard of, for example, for people to build a family in order to pursue further studies. But the relationship between the three of us is not an academic one turned social. We've never even worked on a paper together, for starters. Oh, so the academic paper is the nexus of the academic family. Hmm, interesting. I would think of us more as siblings. An equal and pure relationship, unaffected by academic considerations. As much as I'd prefer not to admit it, that statement is not inaccurate. I can understand that position. I have a younger sister myself, and it's only natural for me to be protective of her. What you describe fits the idea of a city of learning, as I imagine it. The family is where all social relationships intersect. As such, a family founded on common goals may actually be more stable. By the way, who's the eldest between you? Let's not go down this rabbit hole, please. In terms of age, I'm the eldest, of course. He just doesn't want to admit it. But your mental age is younger than that. I dare say even by enough to be the youngest sibling. Perhaps I could bring Kale into this happy family to be your elder sister. No. You will never see me admit to being the youngest sibling. Except perhaps as a last-ditch effort to turn the tables in a game of cards. Guess we'll leave Kali and Sucrose to it. Fingers crossed all goes well for them. Now then, where should we go first? Let's try our luck at the bulletin board, shall we? A lot of people tend to show up there at some point in the day. Maybe we'll get lucky.